Sam Altman rocks Stanford socks. NASA's got total recall on their mind, and China's showing off at this point with yet another humanoid robot. This, plus DARPA's manta ray, Festo Robopods, and more. I'm Nick, let's get it. But first, previously we announced the raffle with a grand prize of $50 in the form of a gift card and we got a winner. Watch this video to the end to find out who it was because maybe it was you. And stick around for more videos to participate in our next giveaways. All right, now let's get it. In a recent Q&A session hosted by Stanford University, Sam Altman lifted the veil on GPT-5, hinted at GPT-6, and explained why he's willing to shell out $50 billion on general artificial intelligence. So no surprise, GPT-5 is a significant departure from its predecessors in terms of capabilities and potential applications, since, quote, GPT is the dumbest model any of you will ever have to use again, end quote. Apparently, GPT-5 will usher in a new era of more sophisticated, intuitive, and efficient artificial intelligence systems because it's that monumental of a leap. Turns out, in developing GPT-5, engineers have improved the model's design algorithms and architecture. This will allow it to understand and generate human text with unprecedented accuracy and depth. Sam emphasized that it was incredibly expensive to develop GPT-5, but it was worth it, as the model will be a key innovation of our time, since its intelligence will not be limited to niche tasks, but will demonstrate broad, adaptive, and more general cognitive abilities. This includes a deeper understanding of context, improved reasoning abilities, and a nuanced understanding of complex interactions, which should revolutionize the use of AI. With that in mind, Sam says GPT-6 will be much smarter than the 5, and on we go, since progress is breakneck speed at this point. Modesty is a virtue, but we get it, it's hard to keep up with the Bible texts for Altman since, according to Sam, OpenAI will play a global and ubiquitous role in our lives. That's because his company will solve every significant problem on Earth, from climate change to cure for cancer to expanding human capabilities to whatever else you can come up with. OpenAI is not just improving the product, they're claiming leadership in technology and innovation. If this goes the way it's going, those dystopian movies with one corporation in charge of humanity around the globe might not actually seem all that distant. Which movies come to your mind? Share your thoughts in the comments. Needless to say, this is a lucrative market, so OpenAI is not alone. Antropic, for example, just recently put up its Claude chatbot for download in the App Store. The bot is able to communicate and recognize images in pictures and photos. It's free, you can test it out right now and compare it to GPT. If you already have, please let us know. Meanwhile, the race for humanoid robots continues. Subcon, another Chinese company, has thrown its hat into the ring. It announced the establishment of the Humanoid Robot Innovation Center in Zhejiang province and the debut of its first humanoid of its own design, Navigator Alpha. Pretty masculine for a company that previously specialized in software and control systems as well as measurement equipment. Now it's doing robots. It's 411 or one and a half meters tall and weighs 110 pounds or 50 kilos. It has humanoid arms with 15 finger joints and six active degrees of freedom. Each fingertip has a force of 10 newtons and the joints reportedly have a speed of 150 degrees per second. Subcon said it plans to integrate large scale artificial intelligence models to achieve an intelligent human interface. Moreover, Navigator Alpha has allegedly already been used in several field test projects. Now that they've made the robot, the new Subcon Center aims to find useful applications for it and set up its production. By the way, a while back, China made it clear as day they're going to mass produce a boatload of humanoid robots in 2025. Hmm, any ideas as to what they're doing that for? And how about this fella right here, Unitree's H1. The robot made an ambiguous impression during an event at Beijing University. This was supposed to be a track and field day or something. Who invited grandma over? Let's cool it with China for a bit and look at Boston Dynamics. They decided to play dress up and got Spot to rock a furry. 
To add insult to injury, they put a psychologically stable spot next to that one. They both did the same dance though. They were programmed with the choreographer tool, which analyzes the robot's position in space to maintain balance and successfully perform all the moves. Now, if you ask Spot to perform a physically impossible movement, it will quickly adjust and do something that resembles what it was asked to do. And that's all fine and good, but the idea of a furry robot itself was inspired perhaps by this. That's all we're gonna say about Woof Woof over here. More details to come later in another video. And Tesla was generous to have shared a new video of the Optimus robot. Apparently, the robot uses its end-to-end -end neural network to perform a number of jobs in the factory, such as sorting battery cells. Optimus does this autonomously, demonstrating high accuracy and even correcting its own errors as it goes along. In the process, the neural network uses footage from a 2D camera and robots onboard sensors. Remember how Optimus hands have both tactile and force sensors? Well, that's not their final version yet. Musk shared plans to remove the robot's actuators inside the forearm to create a more streamlined and human-like shape, as well as increasing the number of degrees of freedom in the arm from 11 to 22. Engineers are now working on improving the robot's navigation and walking speeds. In the video, several robots can be spotted practicing under supervision. Elon, I can do that too. Can you hire me please for your factory? Because so far, this is hardly factory work. But training? Quite possibly. Optimus' introduction to the workforce is rolling full speed ahead and in 2025, they'll already start selling them to customers. And all this is going on while Tesla is on a cost-cutting spree. Yet another victim, this time Gigacasting. This is an innovative production process that Musk planned to introduce for Tesla. It's large format casting of different metal parts of a car into one under a huge press with a pressure of thousand suns. Don't quote me on that one. The introduction of Gigacasting could cut costs in the long run, but initially requires a colossal investment and time. Tesla's CEO felt that he had neither of those things at the moment, therefore Gigacasting you're out. Oh, and by the way, Gigacasting, grab them supercharger employees while you're at it. That's right, layoffs. Musk must have rewatched Office Space, and now 500 engineers and top managers have gotten the boot. The company is going to slow down the pace of building new supercharger stations and focus on keeping existing ones up and running. At the same time, Tesla is the largest operator of any charging stations network for electric cars in the world. The company has reportedly canceled four leases for future supercharger stations in New York, and suppliers have been left out of the loop. Representatives from major car manufacturers, including Rivian, which already signed agreements to switch to Tesla's North American charging standard connectors, apparently can't get a hold of the company. Many believe that Tesla is going through one of the most difficult periods in its 14-year history. What do you guys think is going on there? And by the way, the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has closed its investigation into crashes, including fatal ones that involved Tesla's autopilot. In short, 13 fatal autopilot crashes were not Tesla's fault, but of those behind the wheel. When it comes to other accidents, most of them were head-on collisions where the drivers had enough time to dodge, but did nothing, relying on autopilot. Which is why Tesla received complaints since the actual level of the driver assistance systems did not match the driver's expectations. You can't call autopilot something that isn't. It's like me going to a bar and telling girls that I'm Rob McElhaney. On to space stuff. NASA is planning missions to Mars. Let's break it down. Getting astronauts to the moon saw a several year hiccup because there's a few things that needed to be fixed in the unmanned Orion spacecraft. But Mars, here we come. In particular, NASA has already chosen nine companies that'll get that fat budget for connecting Mars to Earth on paper. Yeah, all that money is gonna be for reports on the possibility of payload deliveries to Mars, communications, etc. In turn, these reports should help organize frequent and inexpensive missions to Mars. Among the selected companies is Lockheed Martin, which will adapt the lunar spacecraft for Mars, as well as modify the orbiter for relay. SpaceX, which so far has only been entrusted with adapting LEO communication satellites to Martian orbit, and Blue Origin will provide retransmission building on tech for LEO and LLO. The companies have 12 weeks to get their essays in. I got a hunch they're all gonna chip in and hire McKinsey for half that money. And DARPA has finally shown actual photos of its manta ray underwater robot, and it's a bit larger than one might have guessed. 
The autonomous submarine resembles either a B-21 Raider bomber or something out of science fiction. It isn't designed to go fast, but long, as well as to deliver different types of cargo. When you see this manta ray, what are you guys thinking? Festo has once again delighted us with a new bionic robot. Those who have been with us for a long time have already seen Festo's amazing bionic learning network robots, which mimic the movements of many different animals. We remember light as a feather, flying seagulls, amazing kangaroos, robots that precisely copy the movements of desert spiders, ants that work in teams, and huge dragonflies. And here is the long-awaited novelty. The robot bee can not only fly autonomously, but also swarm, i.e. fly in a tight formation without colliding with each other. This is the first time Festo engineers have gotten this off the ground. Although the Bionic Bee is Festo's smallest flying robot, it's 8 inches or 22 centimeters long and has a wingspan of 9 inches or 24 centimeters, weighing just an ounce or 34 grams. Bionic Bees were developed using generative modeling where the software application was tasked with creating the best lightweight design using the least amount of materials possible while shooting for maximum stability. The flight path of the swarm, should there be one, is going to be determined by a central computer. As for the design, a brushless motor, three servos, a battery, a gearbox, communication systems, and control components are all squeezed into the small body of the Robocopter. The wings flap at a frequency of 15 to 20 hertz, flapping back and forth with an amplitude of more than 180 degrees. Servos change the geometry of the wing to control lift and direction. Festo notes that each bot is assembled by hand, but because even the slightest differences in assembly can negatively affect performance, the team has included an automatic calibration feature. When necessary, an algorithm makes the necessary adjustments to the flight to ensure safe swarming. And by the way, bionic bees were all the craze of Hanover Mess 2024, the international trade fair for innovation and industrial technology. This year's exhibition attracted about 4,000 exhibitors from over 60 countries around the world, with Chinese exhibitors accounting for 30%. Industrial robots, cobots, and robots for logistics were mainly presented here. Diversity was then added by the familiar robot dogs. Go One from Unitree and Spot from Boston Dynamics, with a Dodger that still remains a mystery to us. If you know what this is, let us know. But there is also something interesting among industrial solutions. For example, air skin technology. These are soft pressure sensitive pads that use air as a sensing medium for collision detection. Industrial robots encased in these pads become safe for humans and other robots. In essence, air skin turns large, powerful and fast industrial robots into basically cobots. This is neat. We like this. What do you guys say? Yay or nay? There's more, but we're out of time. So this is the part where we announce the winner of our previous giveaway. As always, to participate, you have to A, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram, and B, answer the following question. Siri is to Apple as what is to DARPA? And the answer is Kalo or Kalo. So if we turn to our random comment picker, we shall see that the $50 gift card goes to Von Doomcraft. Congratulations, Von Doomcraft. Please check if your email address is up to date on your YouTube page. We'll send you your certificate there. If for some reason that is not an option, then please contact us via the email address located in the description to redeem your gift card. Thank you so much for participating, everybody. Von Gloomcraft, one more time, congratulations. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel, like our videos, and check out our Telegram for more from the world of high tech.